The American economy is once again defying expectations. New jobs report out today shows a blockbuster 272,000 jobs were added to the workforce in May. A lot of those gains in the services sector, industries like healthcare, hospitality, also government. The unemployment rate did tick up a little bit to 4%, while wage growth also picked up. Even though American salaries are rising, most people who want a job right now can get one. Many households say they just are not feeling that strength. Consumer sentiment surveys you can see there on your screen, still far below their pre-pandemic highs. Let's bring back our panel, LZ, Kaivon, Barbara. And joining us now is ABC News political contributing correspondent and co-author of Political Playbook, Rachel Bade. Rachel, I'll go to you first. This economic disconnect is a big challenge for President Biden, also just for Democrats more broadly taking the blame for this uh, ahead of the election. How do you view this issue, you know, five months out? Is this a liability uh, to their re-election campaigns? Absolutely, Elizabeth. It is a huge <laughs> liability, as you just said in your opening. Uh, you know, unemployment is low, wages are going up, but people are not feeling it because prices are high because of inflation, and they just uh, they're having trouble sort of making up that difference and still worried about their bottom line. The problem for Democrats is they're running out of time here. The election is going to be here before they know it. Uh, there's not a lot they can do to sort of turn things around that quickly, uh, and so the Biden administration has sort of resorted right now to sort of putting pressure on some big retailers like Target, like Walmart, to bring down prices. But it's unclear that that's actually going to make the difference. Uh, and it seems like it's unlikely to actually make the difference, given that we haven't seen the polls changing when it comes to people blaming Democrats for just not being happy with their bottom line. Yeah, Rachel, you make such a good point. It's about the prices that people are paying. And Kaivon, we did see the president say this is a great American comeback when it comes to jobs, but acknowledge that there's work that needs to be done. To Rachel's point, does the White House need to change its messaging here, be more forceful and in, in kind of showing where things are good? Well, with due respect to Rachel and others, you know, I think the White House can only do so much in an environment where there's more stories in Politico and Axios about the president's sneaker choice than these economic gains. So that's hard. And I think oh, the entire campaign is oriented around <laughs> telling this economic story. You know, folks always ask me, what does Biden need to do to reach young voters? And I think, you know, young voters are not this big puzzle. They care about everything other Americans care about good job, the economy. So I do think this message will get out there and it's going to be an effective one. I'm going to defend Rachel. No digs at the media here, play. I know they're just reading what they're saying, what the people want to read. I mean, Barbara, we talk a lot about how, you know, every election we say it's the economy stupid, right? Like this is the phrase we hear time and time again. But we have also seen a lot of other issues, frankly, get high up on the list with the economy, abortion, immigration, uh, the war in Gaza. How are you? How do you see the economy stacking up right now um, as an issue ahead of November? Well, a lot of times you see people say they think their own personal situation is in good shape, but they think the economy is bad for others. So that perception that while they may be doing well, others aren't does seem to be an issue. And then people, even people who think they're doing well, do look at that, the inflation, certainly interest rates being stubborn, inflation being sticky, and the fact that, you know, interest rates haven't come down certainly is, you know, stopping, you know, mortgage rates from coming down. Although I do remind my kids, I bought my first house at 11 percent. You know, everyone loved those two, three percent, four percent interest rates. So it's hard to think about buying things at eight, eight, seven or eight percent now. Right. A lot of people, whenever I do mortgage rate story, remind me of those higher rates a couple decades ago. LZ, what do you, how do you explain this difference between the numbers in the economy showing strength and the negativity that we're seeing from a lot of households? Well, I think everyone's basically has nailed it, right? It, it, it's about the prices. You know, even if your wages are going up, if the prices are still high, it's difficult to notice the difference. I think the question that voters need to be asking themselves is, if every measurement that we typically look at says the economy is doing well, why am I not doing well? And start listening to the arguments that people like Elizabeth Warren, like Bernie Sanders had been saying, you know, decades ago, which is the funneling up of all of our wealth up to the upper class. And, you know, every measurement that you can go from the 80s on shows that. How does Biden communicate that? I don't know, but that is the issue at heart. An issue at heart that will only be more important in the months ahead. LZ, Kaivon, Barbara, and Rachel, thank you all so much.